Hi, and welcome to this reclass on using instances uh, to fill out an array. This was uh, session 10, I believe it was. It was essentially what we did for some of the classes after the survey for teacher evaluation was filled out. So essentially what we uh, are demonstrated in this this session was the fact that you can use an array and instead of filling it with simple integers or strings you can actually fill it with instances of a class. Now why would you want to do that? Well what if there's information inside of the array that you want to be able to search for. For example, you want to look f through it and find a particular instance and then find some information that that instance would actually contain. So the example given in class is the following. Let's say that we are going to make a class called a student. All right, and each student is going to have a name and a grade average. All right, so let's make a field called name. This will be a string. And let's make a field called grade average. And it will be an integer. Inside of the constructor for each instance, we will ask for this information to be filled out. So inside of the constructor, we'll simply make two inputs. this student's name and we will simply say this dot name and then what is this student's grade and we'll store this as this dot grade average. So each time an instance is created, the first thing that happens in the constructor is that we ask for this information. Okay. So inside of main, we'll simply add an input here. Let's say, which operation do you want to perform? And actually, I should put this uh, in a controller class, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll just keep it pretty simple. Actually, we won't even actually do the input, as a matter of fact. Uh, instance uh, array. All right, so the only thing we're going to do is we're going to create an array. First, we'll create our iterator to go through this loop and we'll set it equal to zero immediately we will make our iteration so we can actually exit the array and to exit the array what we want to do is compare count and let's say we use we actually will use an input and say how many students do you have? And we'll say student number. So the number of students we want to enter into the array. And if how many times we've run the loop is equal to or not equal to the number of times that we wanted to run the loop. then we will continue if it's not equal until it is equal. So until the number of times we have run the loop is equal to the number of times we wanted to run the loop, we will continue to run the loop. Whenever it is equal, we will exit the loop. All right, so each time this goes around, we will create an instance and we'll call this class room and we'll set the the index that is at count, so the first time it will be one, and then keeps going, keeps going. 
and we'll set it equal to a new student each time. All right, so let's run it the way it is now. How many students do you have? Let's have three. First one's name is Bill. His grade is a 90. The next one's name is Chris. His grade is an 80. And the next one is Ethan, and his grade is a 100. Now we can see here that we have made this array. And inside of this array is a memory link to one of these instances that we've created. We have three instances of the student class, and we can look at the information contained inside of them. All right, so let's say that we want to actually use this array. We want to search through this array for some information. So let's say that we want to actually go inside and say which student do you want to get the grade for? All right, we'll store this as student choice. And this is just going to be a, <clears throat> a string that we enter. And we make another loop, reset our iterator. So we're going to compare student choice with whatever uh, index in this array that we're currently looking at. So what we'll do is we'll use a selection. And the selection will simply be, is the classroom count? So this will be an instance. So it'll be one of these. All right, so let's look at the first one. 4032, so that was this one. Okay, so it's this student. So that'll be classroom one. Okay, this guy. And then we can use dot notation to access his fields. So we can look at the name field. And compare that with the name that we were looking for up here. So, which student are you? Uh, do you want to get the grade for? Well, we want to look at the instance account, grab his name field, and see if it's equal to the name that we entered here. If that's true. We want to output whatever this guy's grade average is. All right, so we can go in here and say we're going to output the student grade is, and then we can use concatenation to use a variable combined with a string. If you're not familiar with concatenation, that's exactly what it does. It's also an Excel function, which I'm not sure if you have seen it or not, but here's your first experience with it. You just use a string and then a plus symbol, and then you can add a, a variable to whatever's after the string. All right, so we can say the student's grade is, and we do the same thing. We look inside of the classroom count dot grade uh, no it's the, what's, what's, what was it yeah grade average grade average okay so if you look at this logically so whatever count is we look inside of that index so in the classroom array we get count all right, and then whichever instance that is, we access his grade average field, and we output that. But only if the instance at count inside the count index 
inside of the classroom array is equal to the name that we entered up here that we wanted to find. Okay. All right, so let's run through this. Uh, what am I missing? Oh, yeah. So if the number of, so if the length of the array, is it called students? No, 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 classroom. If classroom, or the length of classroom, is not equal to count, keep running the loop. Okay? step through. How many students? Oh, I'll add three. First student, we'll say Bob. Students grade 95. We have Ethan. Ethan has a 100 average. And then we have Chris, and he has a 60. All right, so <clears throat> the number that we asked for was three. We've entered three instances. All right, and we can see that the first index, five, six, blah, 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 is Bob. The second index, six, six, seven, five, whatever, is Ethan. And the third, four, three, eight, eight, four, seven, two, seven, is Chris. All right, so which student do you want to get the grade for? So let's say later on we actually include this functionality as a function for a some kind of class that would actually control all this functionality. Usually we call these managers or controllers. Main generally doesn't have this type of stuff. Main is just a set of instances created and function calls. You, normally don't do this type of stuff inside of main but we haven't actually done that okay but we will all right so which student do you want to get the grade for well let's see I want to get the grade for Ethan all right so this is going to create a variable called student choice and student choice is going to contain the string Ethan so we can look here and see that we have created this student choice variable and it contains the string Ethan. Okay, so it gets down to the loop and the length of classroom, blah, 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 it's going to run this loop. So count gets set to one. So count is one. So we look in classroom and the first in the first position and we look at this instance which is this one is its name equal to student choice well is this equal to this no so it will go down here and loop back around to the top next one so now count is equal to two So we look inside of the classroom array at the two position, because count is two. This one is, okay, and this matches this instance. Is this, this instance dot name equal to student choice? So is this equal to this? Yes. So the student's grade is, and then it accesses classroom count, so classroom two dot grade average. So it matches this with this, then it grabs this information and outputs it after the string, the student grade is, and we see that's what happens. The student grade is 100. 
it will still run it again. Even though it did get to yes, you would probably use a break statement here in actual programming, but we can't do that here. So. Okay, it runs no again and exits the program. Okay, so the reason you would want to do this, again, is just like I showed at this section. If you want to make a lot of instances or a few instances of a class, and at some point inside of your program you need to either sort them or search them for some kind of information, like a field, or you want to look for a certain instance and run a method on that instance, you can do this. But you need to make an array or a collection of some sort, and arrays are the only ones we have available to us at this time to actually do that. Okay? So this is a recap of what we did in class for session 10. Again, this is uh, the combination of the concepts of arrays and instances. Uh, remember that arrays are a list, and a, it's a list that contains multiple items of the same type. So it has to be all integers or all strings, for example, a collection of usernames or a collection of grades that need to be averaged together. Or it can be a collection of instances of a class. And you can see here that all these, although these are different instances, they are all instances of the student class. OK? All right, that's it for this reclass. I hope that uh, if you didn't understand it in class, or were absent, or weren't paying attention, that you were able to uh, assimilate this new information with ease. And uh, if you have questions about this, these concepts, go and watch the video again. Uh, if you've reviewed it a couple times and still uh, have questions other than I just don't get it, I can't help you with that but I can help with specific questions on why this works the way it does. Okay, see you next class, and have a good night.